Our next guest is uh, Wakili Willis Sotieno, advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Good morning, Wakili. Good morning. Eric. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, yes. Good to see you. Good to see you after such a long time. You're looking well. I'm um, good. Mm. Looking forward to today's court sessions. Yeah. Yes. What do you have in court today? You know you're always constantly no, that is my battling one thing or the other. No, no, they are not the controversial ones. <laughs> <laughs> these are now the real legal issues. These are, not, these are not, not politically instigated ah, legal issues. Yeah. Yes. Here is Mumbai jurisprudence. Jurisprudence. Very good. <laughs> yes. Sawa. City. Mm. Why don't you, don't you jurisprudence this Wakili <laughs> with the lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Something called today's proverb. Yes. Where are we this week? We are in the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. Uh -huh. Yeah. You were telling us something about uh, this, you, the Carthaginians came. You, uh, who you who see, are these people? Well, the thing is this. Mm. Uh, there are those who argue that uh, the Berbers, uh, these are communities that you'll find in the northern part of uh, Africa, mm. who are the earliest inhabitants of this particular land. Mm. But the thing about the history of... Uh, Algeria, is when you look at the many civilizations we've had and you look at some of the major wars we've had, that's why I mentioned that the Carthaginians, they themselves were serious colonialists. Mm. They rampaged that region right up to Europe, okay? Uh, but then you look at the Roman Empire. They also had a very, very big impact in Algeria. Mm. The French had the biggest because if there was a province of France that was in Africa, it was Algeria. Mm. You had well over a million French men and women who lived there, and they were French people. They were in Algeria, but they were French. Mm -hmm. It was a, a genuine province. So when the War of Independence began, mm. that War of Independence was a serious one because it even became a civil war. Algerians fighting against each other, depending on where it is someone uh, had, had a leaning. Yes. I will talk about the casualties and I will talk about the harm and how the war in Algeria even affected the politics in France. It even got a government toppled and a new government came in. Mm. And the government that came in was led by somebody. I'm told the pronunciation. He's called Charles de Gaulle, a name like mine. Mm. But I'm, I'm told the French, <laughs> the French say it's not Charles, it's Charles. Mm. Okay? Oh, so that particular gentleman mm. actually became uh, the president of France and brought in very many changes. But that's a discussion for another day. day. All right. The proverb, friendship. We call it friendship, but without sincerity. We call it friendship, but without sincerity. Yes. Well, it's, what's your interpretation of this proverb? Mm, it's actually just a proverb that warns you mm. of people who are more of acquaintances. Mm. They don't come into your life with genuineness. So you're forced to be acquainted, mm. but that doesn't mean you are friends, because they may not be sincere with you. In a relationship. Mm. Mm. And what would sincerity look like, uh, Willis? Sincerity is genuineness. How does that look Authenticity. Like? <laughs> you know, I always say that of all my friends, I look at who can I go to sleep with my eyes closed. If any of my friends was to be around me and I must sleep with my eyes closed, then that's a genuine friend. Yeah. Someone who can watch your back. Willis, you don't have friends. It is clear. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who can watch your back. Otherwise, <laughs> I have friends. I have friends. I have many, I have many friends. <laughs> hey, you also have many enemies. Yes. Of course. That's always a lala one. Surely. By the time you're in... <laughs> Eyes closed. You won't. Aye, 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 aye. Listen, Adani have a very good friend uh, in Kenya. His name is Raila Odinga. Well, he didn't say that they were very good friends. He just mm. said he knows them from his very good friend, uh, Narendra Modi, who's currently yes. the Prime Minister of India. Yes. When he was Chief Minister of, what was that state called? Gujarat, Gujarat, yeah, Gujarat. Gujarat. And the man was there for like 12 years. Yeah. Mm. And Raila was our Prime Minister here, and he had uh, visited India, and uh, Chief uh, Secretary uh, Narendra Modi introduced him to Adani, said, this businessman... Top businessman. Good U businessman. U Top Jana, businessman. Jana's idea. Top businessman. Uh. Right? If you become president. Top the businessman. Top businessman. <laughs> 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 now Raila hears uh. that uh, Adani is involved, you know, has uh, done a PIP with the uh, uh, JKIA, with the uh, Kenya Airports Authority for JKIA. He's uh, involved in PPP negotiations uh, for... Uh, power transmission lines in Kenya. There's a company associated with the uh, Adani Group that's uh, also, you know, looking at uh, helping us in the uh, rollout of our healthcare system. 
and people are making noise and saying these are Danny, these are Danny, the other, or Danny is controversial, Danny has the, cannot do these things, like Danny will just. Uh, Raila comes out on Sunday and says, people, no, I have, this is not the first time I'm hearing this name. I've heard this name before. In fact, I've heard this name from a very reliable source mm. who's now the leader of a country with a. They have the highest population now in the world, don't they? They're called the largest democracy. Yeah? Yes. Mm. yes, the largest democracy in the world. Yes, the country with the most people mm. in the world. And uh, if that person can trust this company, and that company is doing very many jobs in that country, surely this cannot just be a tier fly by night briefcase enterprise. It's not. It's a big enterprise. Let's you know, consider it. You Do know, you think that changes things here? No, it doesn't. You know, the main issue here about Adani mm. is not even the company per se. Mm. It's the process that is leading us to Adani being the new Gupta in Kenya. They can as well be all that is said about them. Uh, top company, global contacts, big contracts, huge projects. They can do those projects. Mm. But in Kenya, we have Article 10 of the Constitution on transparency and accountability. Mm. How do you arrive at Adani as the one to do these projects? Look at, for example, now the energy thing they signed. 65 billion Kenya shillings. You know, you ask yourself, why Adani? The same Adani you are giving the airport for free. Mm. They are not putting any coin on it. They are just going to use our money to build that airport. Now, the people of Kenya are saying, why this preferential treatment being given to one particular entity? Why can't we consider alternative models of funding or even go through competitive process of bidding for people to look for these contracts. My preferred mm. as a person, let's take, for example, the energy, uh, the Ketrako agreement. Mm. You know, we have the Nairobi Stock Exchange here. Mm. You want to tell me, if Ketrako was to float its shares here at the NEC and invite Kenyans to bid, or government of Kenya was to float an energy bond that we want to raise 100 billion, Kenyans to buy. You want to use this money to invest a five-year bond. Or you go to NDC and you float shares. Kenyans will own this thing. Our problem is that we seem to be laying the red carpet for Indians to come here and colonize us. You are giving them contracts for 30 years. In 30 years, I assure you, none of the people in government today will be there in that government, even if they are lucky to be alive. They will not be there. But we are enslaving our grandchildren we are turning some Indians to be their slave master. When our forefathers fought the white colonialists, we are now the ones, the same black people laying the red carpet for an Indian to come here and take over our crown jewels. When will Kenyans own these assets? You're mixing very many things there, Willis. On the one hand, you said, it's okay if it was open bidding. Yes. And they came in. Yes. So whether they were Indians, uh, where the people from Czechoslovakia called? Czechs. From, Czechs. from, yes, Czechs. from Slovakia. Or Slovaks. Slovaks, Slovaks. Yes. right? <laughs> Whether they are Slovaks <laughs> yes. or Indians mm. or Kenyans. Yes. And even if we were to talk about Kenyans, whether it's Kenyans from Lima or from Western or mm. from Coast, mm. it doesn't matter. And then on the other hand, now you start saying they are foreigners. Well, the, the do you have a problem with them being foreigners? The or do you have a problem the, with I said, if you wanted to bring foreigners, do an open mm. bidding. Let's get the best in the market. That's one option. Mm. My preferred option is at what point will Kenyans ever own these assets? And I'm saying we have the NSE. Go and float shares in the NSE, rights issue. Or uh, float an energy bond. Let Kenyans buy the bond and use the money to build the infrastructure. And we'll be earning the dividends because at the end of the day, it is our money that will be used to pay off Adani. So do you prefer the Indian to take that dividend, or the Kenyan in Moroni. It's an option. So if you, if you are looking at the best interest of the Kenyan, which will be the best? For me, the best, the best will be mm. the best. Uh, when you're in public office, you're holding a public <clears throat> trust. Mm. Give your people the first opportunity. If they are unable to, then open it up to the second tier. Otherwise, look at countries like Saudi Arabia. We hear people say stories are Jabba. That in Dubai, people don't work, but they are paid by their government. It's not like they are paid for just sitting there. You'll find that when somebody is investing in that country, their government says that you must share, give certain a percentage of your shareholding to locals. So these locals will be earning dividends. When will Kenyans ever get to that level? 
are you telling me that these Kenyan people who have lent, the Kenyan government has borrowed their 5.7 trillion in, from their deposits in bank, cannot raise 100 billion for Ketraco, cannot raise 200 billion for JKIA. They can. When will we ever own these assets as Kenyans? That is the model that I'm proposing. So that mm. when you see somebody is more obsessed with giving foreigners an opportunity, mm. of course there's a black Kenyan behind him. There's a Kenyan Adani. There's a Kenyan Adani who is trying to own these things for himself. Adani is just the face. Adani is just but the front to wink us that we've gotten FDI, mm. direct foreign investment. There's nothing direct there. It is money that somebody has stolen from the people of Kenya or has illegally acquired and then he goes to get a foreign partner who becomes the front, and then he comes to own our crown jewels. Ah, that's marketplace gossip. Uh, uh, that, no, no, you, know, you know, Eric, it can be marketplace it, gossip, but, but from the executive itself, they've told you none other than the former president. I told you we lose an average of $2 billion per day. Yes. That is not me. Yes. No one has ever challenged him. Yes. I'm also aware, if you look at uh, our audit, Auditor General's report every year, mm -hmm. you look at the colossal <coughs> sums that people are losing. So probably those are the people who are coming to years are done. Probably. Now, you know, you are telling yes. you, you know, you, that, that's the thing I'm saying. You <laughs> are picking different pieces of uh, ugali that was left over from like two weeks and putting it all together into one piece of ugali still, and calling still, it one ugali. Still, it's still ugali. Ugali by any other name. From different homesteads. Those yeah. are different ugalis, and you bring them all together and think this is ugali. No, Willis. Let's let's be cautious here okay. in terms of saying. Let's mm. be fair. Let's okay. be fair to everyone. Okay. Let's be fair to those who are making decisions in government. Let's be fair to the investors. Let's be fair to Kenyans. Okay. And say so. What is the issue here? The issue mm. that I said we start with is you have JK. You have Ketraco. Nobody is disputing. These are public assets. Why have we left out healthcare? And in fact, add, add healthcare. Mm. Add there now that uh, shift share. Mm. And there's more. Even in energy, Ketraco is just the beginning. There's geothermal in energy. Now, what is not disputed, this is public asset. Yeah. The second thing is we want to leverage and raise more funds to improve their capacities mm. or their efficiencies. Mm. Not disputed. The third point is the how, which is the preferred model yeah. that we are seeing Kenya Kwanza and William Ruto pursuing. Their preferred model is to go to India and look for Adani. Because even if you look at the contracts Adani has signed uh, with Kenya, they are being signed within a day. Somebody is moving from India, making a proposal the same day, text to KA the same day, text goes to Treasury, Ministry of Transport the same day, goes to Treasury. Everything is approved in one day. You just write a letter to the MD to ask of KA asking for a meeting. You'll get a response after 32 days. And yet, this is just a meeting. But somebody talking of colossal sums of money, everything is done at uh, rocket speed. Yeah, okay. But you've actually gotten to the heart of the matter. Mm. Somebody talk about colossal sums of money. Yes. If, if we look at the anatomy of how we do business in mm. Kenya, mm. the moment there's a colossal amount of money, mm. a lot of people mm. can see their interests being taken care of. Yes. Because there's enough to be divided around and for everybody to feel yes this thing has been divided well now we and you're saying and at the cost of the citizenry that is what my, my, my argument that if it is a, a gross of of money and their benefit they move at uh, supersonic speed hmm? but my argument is this if it involves a public asset what should be driving a decision maker is what is called public interest. Mm -hmm. What is in the best interest of the people of Kenya? Now we need to improve JKI, for example. Yes. Which are the funding models that we can use? So the decision maker says these are colossal sum of money, uh, 200 billion. Maybe I'll also get a cut here. So we need to move quickly, everybody. Yeah? Take your box quickly mm. because we are the ones ring fencing this thing. And when you see that kind of supersonic speed, you are not seeing public interest in it. I'm saying, if you are concerned in public interest, you'll say, can I give Kenyans the first opportunity to own this? And how can Kenyans own this? There are models that Kenyans can own this. And they'll find the money. Eric, you can't tell me that between you and me and the one million listeners who are out there, if you are all told to remove only 5,000 or 2,000 shillings to contribute to a bonds issue, 
and we are seeing that there will be dividends. I mean, JKI will never make a loss. KA never made any loss. JKI, anybody who walks into that airport, pays money. You go by Uber, you go by Cityopa, you go by whatever model, you drive your own private car. That is even before you start flying. On your passenger ticket, there's a passenger levy that is levied for airport. Airport infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. So KA will always make money. JKA will never make a loss. So you tell a Kenyan, I mean, we are giving you an opportunity to own a piece of JKA, contribute your money, and we paid dividends commensurate with your contribution. Kenyans will put the money in. We will become the lords of the country, little kings of Kenya. I agree. But, but you also agree that that's one option. And... That is one option, and I say... And nowhere in the law does it say that is the primary option. That is why I said, you ask yourself, what is in the best interest of the Kenyan, which is the best? Can I ask a different question yes. on this? Mm. What does our... What does our laws... Our laws... What does it say about an investment such as this one? Uh, in my is view, there a path that is laid out clearly? In my view, I'll start you with uh, what we call the Public Procurement Asset Disposal Act which had a very elaborate process. Open tender, or you can do single sourcing, or you can do restricted tendering. And the circumstances then, under which, yes? Uh, subsequently, <coughs> this 13th parliament, the one that I say is a caste parliament, came out with the PPP, Private Partnership, Public-Public Partnership Act. And parliament sits down as the people's representatives and decides to remove the requirement for parliamentary approval for a PPP. Who have they given the approval mm -hmm. to? It's the executive. Now these PPP don't have to go to parliament for approval. Now it means executive in, uh, onchos can sit and sign off a PPP without even the people's uh, representatives looking at it. Uh, interesting. And that is what now, if you look at Kenya Kwanza, this is the model that they've adopted. This is the model of everything they want to do. They are going under PPP. Okay. They are not going under the public procurement and asset policy. Okay. Uh, you've answered the question. Mm -hmm. Well, now, this PPP, there's a word there, public, isn't it? Yes. Uh, are we, it doesn't require public participation. Uh, public participation is a dictate of Article 10 of the Constitution. Mm. Even if you're doing a PPP, you are still bound by Article 10 on the principles of governance and the national values. One of the principles of governance is public participation. Then we have transparency, then we have accountability. So even in your PPP, you must, have public you must still do public participation. You cannot say that the constitution doesn't apply to our yes, project. But then we have a, a small snag here. Mm. Our laws don't actually give us mm. the nuts and bolts of public participation mm. and the threshold that must. Or does it exist? Or was it, it put it, in it, place? No, and I don't know. No, the laws, we've not developed a public participation law, but the courts have rendered themselves on this issue so many times that anybody who wants to follow the law. There are enough court decisions, including the Supreme Court of Kenya, that have set out parameters within which to conduct public participation, what will be considered to be qualitative and okay. quantitative. Now, in a case such as this one, what sort of public participation would we need to see in order to understand that that threshold has been met? I will say the first aspect of it is that you need to ex educate the public. Tell them, we have this project you want to do. You invite people to give their views on your proposed funding model, and if, what are the potential funding models? Give them all options. Say we can give it direct to a private entity. Another funding model, we can offer it a rights issue to the people of Kenya to buy. We can also do a bonds issue to the people of Kenya to buy. Or we can just get a partner to come and work with the entity. So in your qualitative public participation, you give all these options and invite the people to give their comments and suggestions on how to improve it. Then as a decision maker, you go and make your decision and you ask yourself, you give reasons why you chose the single sourced PPP with Adani as opposed to the popular sentiments that says the people of Kenya wants a rights issue on JKA. Why did you opt op for this one and not this one? So you give your op options. Then you say we are giving it to Adani. We have no issue with Adani as an entity. We have a major issue with Adani in regard to how it is being brought into the Kenyan governance space. So it's a process. But the process, largely. But also, if you look at the PPP Act mm. at Section 41, one of the checklists that you look at is if that can company has been involved in any jurisdiction in which it operates, 
has been under any investigations, <laughs> has been accused of issues of tax, uh, <laughs> non-compliance with tax regimes or that. Adani has serious investigations in Australia. Adani's officials, some of them have been convicted. So, when the executive, the treasury executives were asked this question, you know what they said? That in India there's nothing that has happened to them. But the law is not about India, their country of origin. <laughs> the law says in any jurisdiction in which it operates. And then what does the law say? So if you find if one, you find that one case, one case is enough. To it's suffer. enough. It's enough because is, is that what the law says? Yes, that's what the law says. Oh, that once you on. listen, look at the Act, of Section oh, Forty One. Nah. No, no, it's not me saying. Look mm. at Section Forty One. For as long, let me read it for you. I will read it. Let me get it for you. <laughs> I want you to get it where the law says that if you find that there has been a case against this entity anywhere in the world, don't proceed. Even if it's one. Yes. And the, the entity is global. Yes. It any, any, juris, any, jurisdiction any jurisdiction in which it operates. In which it operates. Yes. Okay, read it. Now you found it. Due diligence, that's section 41. Yeah. Due diligence on privately initiated proposals. The directorate in coordination with the contracting authority shall, before commencing an evaluation, All before right. commencing, yeah, right. An evaluation of a private entity proposal conducts due diligence and confirm that the private entity is not corrupt, has not engaged in acts of corruption, has not been sued or convicted on account of acts of corruption, is not insolvent under receivership or bankrupt or his affairs not being admitted by a court or judicial officer, then is tax compliant in all jurisdictions in which it has local tax presence and in its home country of registration mm -hmm. and is not in default. Mm -hmm. So the finding of it is that you must first establish that this entity is in compliance. You yes. confirm. Yes. If it's not in compliance, it's not tax compliant in any jurisdiction. In fact, the wording is any jurisdiction yes. and in its home country. Yes. Now, Adani, in relation to Australia, mm -hmm. has issues. It's not even Australia, even India. Even in India, itself, oh, that's yeah, the home country. They have been scrutinized by the Supreme Court. They have. Have yes. they been found to be... Uh, the no, no, investigations no, no. Not, and not the accusations... Compliant. The point is, the, the court does not even say... The question is that we are looking at if there are complaints in relation you to it. Re you didn't read the word complaint, one. Uh, I'm reading it. This is what I'm reading it for you. Is tax compliant in all jurisdictions in which it has local tax presence. Tax compliant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the, the investigation in India is over stock manipulation. Uh -huh. Yes. That is not in tax. But in Australia, That's not it's issues of tax. By the way, has it been stock manipulations have a direct correlation with, with the tax. tax. It's true. But, but is it does not specifically it mention say that you are tax. tax. Yeah. It doesn't say that you're not tax compliant. Will you be tax compliance if you're under... Will you be deemed to... Will KRA issue you with a tax compliance certificate but, when, but you're under, but Willis, when you're under... But Willis, 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 yeah, Willis, they can't Willis, issue. Willis, Willis, remember mm. that even in this country, when we have the Auditor General raising issues, it's an audit query. Mm. Okay? You're not guilty. It's just that further explanation is required. And one could look at the accusations that were made by this Hindenburg research, and they would say... They are being investigated, but the investigations have not been concluded. So they are actually not guilty. Yep. It's still a going uh, concern and yes. an entity registered in that company, yes. in that jurisdiction. Yes. Is it still doing business in the jurisdiction? It, it is. is still doing. And, and I've told you, just like tax compliance, uh -huh. if today KRA was having a tax issue with me mm. or any other person, mm. once there is an issue, yeah. they cannot issue the tax compliance because you are subject of a review. Are you saying but the that the Australian tax authorities have not given them a tax clearance of course they are but otherwise they will not be asking this question have they given them a tax clearance or not we've not seen it now that's what the question we, is we, we we've not seen it the director of mm. ppp mm. yes okay mm. if the director of ppp has not done that that's the issue now i'd, I'd be comfortable mm. with you saying mm. the uh, australian authorities have not cleared this company on tax mm. compliance mm. the requirement is that the directorate of ppp mm -hmm. shall establish whether they are tax compliant in all the jurisdictions. Mm. There is one in which they are not tax compliant. Mm. And for that reason, I find that the director of PPP did not do due diligence. Now, if we are not talking about that, Willis, mm. to watch any name. What, what I see and I hear, even what, from what you're raising, Wakili, is the issue of the, a government that has a serious, serious trust deficit, doing things ostensibly for the good of the public, and the public are not walking the journey with that government. 
so the, the public is being informed at the tail end of our process mm. and that public then looks back and from history from knowing what this and previous governments have done before everything then just smells dirty and the government knows that why is the government not trying to just make things right because why bring Raila, for example a heavy heater to come and say Adani is clean of course uh, when you look at what they are doing mm -hmm. They are doing it for themselves, not for the people of Kenya. Mm. Because I can tell you, let's pick JKA for example. We had the passenger levy, which was supposed to be used for development of the airport, which we've been paying since 2012, when Kibaki was president. On every ticket, there's a passenger levy. As at 2022, the passenger levy had collected 50 billion plus. Already collected. And Kibaki's signed agreement mm. with the Chinese was to build a new terminal, Greenfields Terminal, at 55 billion Kenya shillings. In other words, our money will have funded it. If you got a soft loan, in five, ten years' time, we will have paid it off and we'll be owning the terminal. But then somebody comes here and tells you, mm. we are giving it to Adani. And Adani is going to invest allegedly 170 billion. When did they even do the feasibility study for the airport? Who gave them access to do a feasibility study? Where is that feasibility study? How does it move away from the Kibaki government signed 55 billion to now 170 billion? And then where does it come that we are giving you the airport for 30 years? When we had a model here that the contractor was building it, our passenger levy fee, we've been paying it until today, even today I'm paying it, could build for us a better airport. So it simply means that somebody is not interested in the public interest. It's not in the best interest of the people of Kenya. Because if you ask me, the Kibaki government agreement was the better agreement. Because it was just, you come and you build, the entity remains your KAS, mm. the people of Kenya. Mm. But we'll pay for it from our own passenger levy, and we'll have a modern airport. But this one, you're giving an Indian an airport for 30 years without... <laughs> As having, in fact, you even put a caveat there that at the end of the 30 years, you will even pay them some money, a concession, and you can even extend it for them. Why are you giving out the crown jewels? Crown jewels are meant to be protected. Next time I'm, I tell you, these guys will even go and give out the KDF if you're at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> because if you start giving out all the crown jewels, what will stop you? Where's the, where do we draw the line? You they may the, decide that we are giving mercenaries to run our KDF. Willis, do you know the impact of actually handing over JKI in the manner that you have described? Mm. You are saying mm. that even when it comes to the functions of the authority, mm. that Adani will have a say. Of course. You are saying mm. that when it comes to the controlling of flights and an understanding of the security around flights, is that what we're saying, that all this will be handed to Adani? One, now, yes, well, now, now, the problem with that is this, if that is the case, it doesn't just affect Kenya. Some yes. of these things are shared facilities that our neighbors also have a say in. Exactly. So essentially, you've gone and given a foreign entity all these things. Now, so the security element goes out with the wind. What happens in, the, in the other jurisdictions where a, an airport is actually being privately handled? Uh, there's what we call the state-owned airports. Mm. And then we have the privately-owned airports. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm yet to see a jurisdiction where an airport moves from state-owned to private. Normally, if a private entity, like the Netherlands, have decided to put up their private airport, you'll even see in terms of the flights that are landing there, they're limited. Even the capacity, the installations that are put in that particular private airport are limited. The main air traffic control will still be at the main airport. But in this particular instance, we are giving over everything to Adani at JKIA. They are taking over management of that airport. For 30 years. So, which will be the alternative military airport, for example, or police? They run you the, said head, they run the airport. Hyderabad airport, for example, in India. Yes. Or let's even talk about the port of uh, that Israel place. So it's called Haifa. Haifa. Right? In the, in the case of the port of Haifa, because they are running the port of Haifa, mm -hmm. what does that mean? You know, when you talk of this, there, there, there's, management, there's management. There's management. There's management of the port. Right. But there's also what is called almost ownership of it. When you're a manager, it's like giving a cleaning company 
the right to, I mean, a, a real estate company, a realtor, mm. that you manage for me my property, I collect rent, make sure the place is swept and uh, everything is running. Do the that, is, that is not what we gave Adani. What was it? At the airport. We gave them the airport. We gave them control. Control mm. of the airport. Everything in the airport is under Adani. So even if you want to go and put your food kiosk at the airport, you will go and look for Adani, not KA today. If that was signed. That is what we have a problem with. We are not saying that we are bringing Adani to become the airport manager. We are giving them the entire airport. Even, even so, they are going to put up hotels there. Eh? What has hotels got to do with the airport? They are the ones going to collect rent from all those infrastructure developments that are in the airport. That was part of what they are getting. So, and I'm asking, for what? What are we getting in return as the people of Kenya? We are getting nothing. So it only means that there's somebody somewhere who is getting more than the people of Kenya are getting. Because as I've told you, it's a question of money. We had enough money as of 2022 over 50 billion. We had a contract for 55 billion to build a new terminal in that same airport. Now we are just giving these Indians an entire airport to decide who walks in, who walks out, who is even employed. They say they even go and beg, we beg them to employ your people. They can say, no, we don't want your staff, we are bringing Indians. And they can bring them and land them at JKI, you'll never see them. You'll only be meeting them as you are walking out, telling you bye-bye. <laughs> but that is what we are saying, it's not in the best interest of the people of Kenya. And as uh, City says, what about our regional obligations? What about shared facilities with the regional partners? Are we also going to subject them now to Adani? And some of those shared facilities are also shared with the military. Military, exactly. And that becomes a problem. A yeah. huge problem. You, you guys can stretch this thing. Eh? No, but no, no, but no. two cover in here at the airport. You guys can really, as in <laughs> they have hung at the airport. You have decided, so we can stretch. Let's stretch all the way. But it's the truth. You see, oh, that is why everything. when it is when it is I, done clandestinely, I, these are the questions we could have asked but, in public participation. But everything, what every, everything I said can be cross-checked. Yes, I, it's a fact. I, I, you people. Eric, even if you are playing the devil's advocate, uh, you people. Sometimes when the devil is wrong, there are several the entities that, one, that are involved in, for example, air air traffic. There's, yes. there's, air traffic control. There's yes. the regulator, yes. which is the Kenya Civil, is, yeah. Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Yes. That's in charge of the equipment, the tower, mm -hmm. the navigation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the airspace, mm -hmm. the landing and taking off. Yes. Okay. Yes. The airport staff are involved with the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. And managing that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, but, uh, that is so true. now where are we talking about it even who comes and the who, reason why that has been brought into the discussion, Eric, is for eh, someone to explain people. to us that they are not. What they are not. What happens to these ones? Yes, because That's what you are saying. If you are taking all those things involve the airport. Yes. So what is it that is airport related that is not in the deal? That really is uh, Wilson ha uh, I mean Willis has his questions. I mean this is mine. Mm. <laughs> what else which is airport related which is not in that deal that so really the, is the question so the question comes back into the lack of transparency yes in yes. the process yes, yes. and that, that lack of transparency in the process then lends to all these questions yes and very many things that people for even if it's two years or 15 years or 33 years mm -hmm. or 27 years they'll always be there mm. the process that we arrive at to uh, you know sign this contract which whichever with, with whichever contractor whether we call this one Adani India or we call this uh, company Willis and CT. Mm. As long as there was no transparency, <laughs> people of Kenya will look at it and say, Now you Willis. Mm. Mm. There'll be stories. Then you find Raila defending us. Then now Raila defends us. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if, if, if we were to use... Willa, Raila is defending Otiyan Muga. <laughs> <laughs> if we are... <laughs> so we know where that has come from. <laughs> if we had to look at the history of this country and why the trust deficits now sort of like peaks mm. is when we look at the SGR. Mm. What were we told about the SGR and the promises of the SGR? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The reality is you are, you're more or less paying for a dodo, okay? Yeah. And you are paying steeply. steeply. That was not the promise. Yes. That was not the promise. So now if someone comes up with a project that reminds you of the SGR, even if it is good, your first reaction is no. 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 Answer all the questions. Please answer all the questions before first we start. Okay. before we go anywhere And else. more so because you are ceding control. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you told me that we are just doing an open tender. Someone come and build and transfer back to us. We are not operating. And we pay them over 30 years. We pay them over 30 years. In fact, they can, why can't they say, we'll give you 200 billion, 
we build this terminal it remains your terminal you continue managing the airport using ka and we'll pay you after 30 years over 30 year period because what is good for goose must be good for the gander mm. if them they want us to wait 30 years we can as well build and we'll pay adani after th- within 30 years mm. we spread it we stretch it because mm. more, more importantly if you look at the hr issues here you say you are coming in you're taking control mm. the, just transparency what happens to people who work at jk mm. the key employees okay mm. yeah. it, it's not that they haven't been taken care of but we don't know mm-hmm. and so long as one doesn't know that is fodder for conspiracy so why do you think the government is not addressing these issues Because, you know, look from from okay. the moment the questions emerged mm. in the public right mm. from the moment they emerged they went to uh, parliament they went to the national assembly to the senate um the statements that were coming out first from the prime cabinet secretary then from kaa then from the cabinet secretary in charge of transport and all this there are answers that they are not giving why do you think they're not giving those answers is it that they're not seeing the importance of some of these questions or is it that they just don't have answers to some of these you know, questions this question that are being asked are exposing the scam that Adani deal in JKA is mm. and anybody reason who could try to give a reasonable answer mm. will expose because it's a question that the answer is obvious why did you go this long route mm. why didn't you consider this employees how are you going to transfer them why 30 years why Adani when these questions are asked and you expect a plausible answer the executives are going to tie themselves up So they don't want to answer. I believe the call came from somewhere that we need to push this deal. So nobody is going to go on public record mm. to have answered those questions mm. or to have given a plausible reason. But if this thing was cooked properly, and by cooking properly I mean if we went to the public from the beginning and we engaged the public and all the stakeholders in the aviation sector mm. on this need for a new terminal. Yeah. You know, sometimes run this country as if William Ruto just woke up and became president. That there was no Kenya before mm. that he came with the country no there was Kenya before William Ruto became president and part of that Kenya had a document called the vision 2030 blueprint in that vision 2030 there was the issue of the airport expansion in fact even before vision 2030 was done Kenya Airways had done what is called the Mawingu project flagship which had also designed and seen that in the future we need to expand uh, JKIA and was selling it to government kibaki's government bought it they put it in the blueprint for vision 2030 and even the models of developing it were all there and it all spoke to it will be an open tender it will be awarded the capacity will be enhanced from 1 uh, million uh, passengers per year our target is we need to get to 30 million passengers by that time 2030 but william ruto comes in and it's like kibaki was never president that he was never in that cabinet of kibaki which discussed this issue 2030 things he was there in that cabinet he ignores it and comes up with his own little baby a baby that doesn't have a head doesn't have a leg we don't know if it's a human or it's an animal and just tells us hand over to a muindi where did this muindi come in because if he was using the vision 2030 which is part of now policy document for the republic of kenya he will have seen that there's no chance there for a muindi to come and take over jk What is there that the Kenyan people have committed to is an expansion of JKIA and the model of funding it we are going to do open tender KA will continue existing and KA will manage that airport no single employee was going to if anything the new terminal was going to be a promise of more jobs to Kenyans through KAA now we are reduced to not even securing what we have we are reduced to going to beg Indians that please don't sack our people don't fire our employees this indian thing is bad and if you go to the energy sector i'm just looking here at bangladesh when adani took over their power plant power operation their debt now on power alone energy alone they increased the rates the tariffs is now 800 million us dollars part of why that government you know the the lady was toppled was because of the issue of power who was the main power supplier adani i mean If that is what William Ruto needs for us to also go back to the streets by giving a Danny our power sector then maybe that is a godsend we should wait for it 
you will be called to answer what is this obsession with this muindi Uh, no, 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 you have to. No, uh, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, 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 you, listen. You can continue. I'm just uncomfortable uh, with the way you are terming it. It's derogatory. No, no, no. Just say, oh, okay. Let, if somebody called me the, a black man, I, India, I'm a black man with the Indian with the Indian. Indian. Okay, with yes. the Indian company. Yes, yes. But please. the director of that company yes, yes. is a Mwindi. But let me say this. Yes. Let me say this. We're not saying that he's a Jalu lawyer. No, no, no. Oh, I'm please. a Jalu lawyer. That one is a uh, uh, but, uh, but of, how, of, how you put it. <laughs> because because it's the context listen, no, the it's point a, is because you get my of point. The, i get your point the well, point is the so context but i'm saying this mm. the main issue is this when they decide that they're laying the red carpet for this particular entity foreign entity let me call him foreign entity laying a red carpet for this foreign entity that whatever they want they get we've not even spoken about shift share and their influence all over there because in shift share eric the sad thing in this country today In fact what my heart cries out for are those kidney dialysis patients who had been up to date in paying their NHIF then somebody wants to spend of 100 billion to transit from uh, NHIF to shift share and right there again you find this for an entity somewhere along the way and now the NHIF kidney dialysis patients cannot get dialysis now four weeks they have not gotten dialysis some are not able to pay there is a lady who died she could not raise 9500 for dialysis she is dead what is this even promise of a better future even if we got it right was there no redundancy period to make sure that even as we transit to this shift share nonsense we are able to accommodate those who are already in dire need of healthcare services so you are seeing a foreign entity that walks into kenya and every sector it wants everything is being bent backwards to accommodate it including even if it's going to lead to deaths of Kenyans and I'm giving you the example of those who are moving from NHIF the dialysis patients who have not been catered for in the transition period they can die and the government doesn't care you know the this problem that we speak of is not a William Ruto problem if you go back to the Kibaki era did we actually prosecute to conclusion the anglo leasing issue we lost money there didn't we you see Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm going through a list mm. of things that have happened. So if you're talking about public apathy, it's with reason. There's a history of it. You're talking about the Uhuru era. Take your pick. Are you going to talk about the SGR? Or are you going to talk about the Mawingu project? Yeah, yeah, just take your pick. Things that we were told were going to benefit the country, but somehow it just fizzled out. Mm. So what the, the William Ruto government has done, they've come with their own. Mm. Public apathy has been growing. It may have reached a crescendo here, yeah. but it's been growing. It, it didn't start with this government. It has been there and it has been growing and growing. And the only thing that marks the Uhuru and the William Ruto era is the boldness with which they have proceeded with these things. It's like they know they will get away with it, so they simply do it. Well, it's in 30 seconds, about a minute though. Mm. What's a public reprieve? I mean, if because clearly the Traco deal has been signed mm. this one with JKIA mm. all indicators are showing that this train left the station is about to reach its destination one, 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 one thing i can assure kenyans is this these things will not go unchecked and they are going to be challenged and adani and his uh, local accolades will lose there is no difference from gupta in south africa gupta also took over the entire state the state capture Adani is doing state capture in Kenya and the Kenyan people should not relent at the right time those who have enabled this state capture will be called to justice and they must answer for what they've done to this people republic those who've died as a result of this failed NHIF uh, shift share transfer they must be accounted for and we must call executives to account that is a promise that I make to the people of Kenya that in as much as it may look like it's not possible today but all these things will fail the writing is on the wall on the 25th of june mene mene tekel the writing was on the wall in regard to this regime the people of kenya cancelled it this trying to sell our crown jewels is part of trying to run away from the debt default they are now trying to get our sovereignty their time is up well isotiano thank you very much for joining us wakili this is the situation room the only way to start your day